Hey everybody, this is Perch, and there's been some numbers. Uh, the ICV2 Comicron comic sales report for 2020 came out, and immediately everyone started to misunderstand what it was uh, saying. Um, what's interesting, and and maybe a little or a lot frustrating, is um, I, I I mean I, I've said this in other videos. Uh, Comicron, uh, in particular, uh, John Jackson Miller. Uh, I think he's a very smart guy, and what I appreciate about John Jackson Miller is that he he tells you you do have to read it and maybe that's the problem but he tells you when he's uh, making a guess versus using numbers he tells you uh, the, the more or less the math behind his models behind how he's uh, analyzing these numbers right now uh, after the pandemic shutdown we haven't gotten numbers the same way we used to we used to get uh, fairly reliable numbers out of diamond although even there they were fudged a little bit um, what i typically do when i show my numbers is i get uh, what numbers i can from the publisher and i get the numbers from diamond this is how it used to work and then i would compare the two and there would definitely be differences between those two um why i my guess is that uh one entity or the other at various times would keep their numbers more up to date and things like reorders and other stuff would fall off. Uh, Comicron used the diamond numbers, uh, to my knowledge, my understanding. They may have done that double validation that I do. I don't know. Today, I personally am not getting diamond numbers, but I am getting uh, numbers from the publisher uh, when I can, but usually by title or because I happen to be buddies with you know somebody in editorial or whatever it happens to be. But it's it's kind of ad hoc. And, uh, and and so I'm down to a single point. I'm down to just the, the publisher. So I don't like that because I've known their inaccuracies in the past. And so when I do those videos, I do try and cite that, you know, at an end. But it, the, the, the interesting thing about Comicron is that they're making an estimate based off of, in, in particular, some things with Comics Hub and other since the pandemic. And the, it, Mick, Miller states that pretty, I mean, I mean openly, uh, states that uh, there's, you know, there's issues with this, that, that it's not definitive. I mean, he's not hiding that fact. Other people do, but they take, you know, I don't think people are reading those reports. Anyway, uh, there's nice graphs that they put out. Those are easily shared. They show a trend line that's more or less going up um, in the comic, you know, comic business. Um, and the, the, the headline, I guess people are saying is in 2020, uh, things rose. Right. It's a higher number in 2020 than 2019. Therefore, everything in comics is doing great. So the, the problem is that's not true because of the word everything. <laughs> and it also I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I mean, this is a case where you can make these numbers. If you really dig into the data, uh, paint almost any picture that you want. Uh, you, you, you would have to be a little disingenuous in what you pick and what you don't. And so we're seeing that play out as people interpret these numbers, including articles that are written. It seems like the articles that are being written for comics news sites have one purpose. And that purpose is, well, not one, sorry, two purposes. Purpose number one is to say, see all you haters, the comic industry is doing great. And purpose number two seems to be saying, um, you know, manga wasn't as big a deal as, as people have been saying. Um, the, both of those are, are, are kind of, uh, what's the point, I guess, is, is my answer. Um, the comic industry, if we're saying, if you're using the word industry, you know, capital I industry, um, then we have to accept that the comic industry is a very large umbrella. If you're going to roll all these numbers up into one, you are counting YA, you are counting manga, you're counting you know North American sales of all these things. By the way, one very important distinction I've seen some people screw up is that when we say manga, we're saying manga sold in North America. We're not saying manga sold all over the world. Um, and what's interesting about some of these uh, roll-ups that I've seen, I need to dig further into ICV2 numbers and other things, um, there's still some uh, some elements that I would argue should be part of this report that aren't. Um, it's also questionable because uh, ICV2 and Comicron does not roll in uh, scholastic numbers as near as uh, they they roll in things to book channels, but they're not rolling in things like Dogman. Other uh, numbers, other sites do roll in things like Dogman. And if Dogman was selling, uh, I don't know, 20,000, 30,000 copies, it wouldn't matter. It'd be a rounding error considering all the rest of the information. 
But unfortunately, Dogman is is selling uh, millions of copies. And so it is something you have to you roll in. And Scholastic, um, even though schools and other things, they, they are still able to get a lot of their books out into other channels and sell. So this you, you have to whenever somebody wants to talk about comic numbers, we almost have to stop and say, all right, but what are we talking about here? Are we talking about print only? Are we talking about print and digital? Are we talking about, uh, you know, imports, manga? Are we talking about just the North American direct market comics? You know, Marvel, DC, and what Diamond uh, puts out with floppies? Are we rolling in all kinds of sequential art and YA? Like, what, what are we talking about? Because people conveniently slip in or leave out those numbers all the time, and they get different different results. So, unfortunately, like I said, a lot of these articles, a lot of people who are looking at these numbers... Again, not ICV2 and Comicron directly, but the people who are assessing this, um, they're coming at it from the premise of, uh, I want to tell a certain story. I want to give the finger to the people who say the comic industry is dying. And so therefore, I'm going to use these charts very conveniently to kind of slip things around. Um, One of the biggest uh, problems, I guess, that I would have with this chart and, and again, I, I, have, I, I only respect the work that John Jackson Miller does do over at Comicron, I think, again, because he says when he's estimating and when he's not. The, the one part of this picture that, that I think gets a little shaky is that because we're doing estimates of what's going on inside the comic store, um, it's painting a very weird picture. This line... Um, the comic periodical market was ahead for the year before the pandemic struck, and the result of production cutbacks was that 30% fewer new comics were released by the major publishers in 2020. That's factual. That, that is a fact. And then he does this analysis. The fact that new comic sales were down by only 20% suggests that retailers did well with what they were able to get. So the analysis he's basically saying is that uh, 30% fewer comics uh, were released in 2020, but sales dropped only 20%. So there's a 10% delta, which means that uh, t- comics sold slightly better. However, um, there's a little, there, one of the misnomers in there is that comics did get, you know, the ones that sold, especially in high volumes, were more expensive. And that is a factor in all this, that, that we're talking about unit sales and the unit sales rose during that period. Not enough to make up the whole 10%, but they did rise enough that it's not, this picture is not quite exactly as as stated. There's other factors involved. Um, and again, it's not Miller, but it's the way people are interpreting Miller. So like you look over at Bleeding Cool and they say, uh, you know, they, they basically take that one line that, ja- that Miller says and they make this assessment from it. They say they also state that Diamond's seven week shutdown harmed comic book sales but that the demand surged in the second half of 2020 as comic store distribution returned. Now, that's not an accurate sentence. It surged, first of all, we're starting to insert things like surged in there. It's a weird way of saying it. But also, you know, number one, it's not taking into account that some of the comics sold were more expensive. And number two, it's also uh, making an assessment of comics hub numbers as opposed to total comics sold. So it's, it's, it's all kind of goofy. The other big thing about these numbers, though, is manga. And that's what a lot of people are talking about, is that manga is making up the gap in comics, um, it, which is more or less true. And there's, But there's two big reasons for that people do need to understand. Uh, it, is, it is very impressive to see what manga has done, but it's not the entire dunk I think people think it is. Two things happened with manga. Uh, number one, you had multiple big series, Demon Slayer, uh, My Hero Academia, and a handful of others all hit at the same time. And the big reason why they hit is because uh, Netflix started caring and promoting a lot more manga in 2020. So it gave more visibility to people into those products and they went to buy the books. Uh, that's there, There's other news agencies that have made that direct connection and it's, it's true. You can see all the series that, uh, even things like The Promised Neverland that, uh, that Netflix promoted, um, you see a corresponding significant rise in books. Now, that's a video for another time and an interesting one to say, why is it that uh, with manga, uh, I think we already know the answer to this, but why is it with manga when Netflix promotes manga, we see comic sales rise, but when, say, Disney Plus puts out Marvel material, we don't see a rise in those comics. Um, And I think the easy answer to that is there's usually more of a one-to-one correlation between 
the anime and the manga. But but still, that's an interesting thing that if you're a comic publisher, you should really be taking a look at. Uh, but the other thing that's true about manga is that um, keep in mind, and, and this is where I'm seeing a number of uh, uh, comic creators and others right now saying, uh, you know, manga is comics. And so it, it belongs, you know, if, if, if this business is rising, it just means tastes are changing a little bit from Western comics into manga. And that's good for us all. And I love that attitude. I, I agree with that attitude, but I'm a little bit surprised to see people take that position because manga is not created here in the U.S. Um, none of the comic creators who are in the comic business uh, have a hope of breaking into manga. And, uh, the you know, and, and also I'm not sure the pay would be <laughs> what a lot of the the people would want uh, that, you know, it's it's not the most lucrative position for creators in Japan. Um, but all this manga sales is a result of imports. It's a result of Viz, for example, doing a really good job of getting that content into the U.S. And over the last two years, Viz has and, and others have really improved their operations to get more books into the U.S., to get it into more booksellers, to get more distribution. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the content of that, that manga is great and I love it. But you, you have to uh, you cannot deny that there's a lot of smart business decisions going in that have nothing to do with the content. Uh, it's it's smart business relationships with the big booksellers, with Barnes and Noble, with ads on Amazon, with other places that are getting these books to more hands and more eyes. Um, when you look at those giant shelves in Barnes and Noble, for example, where manga has, you know, in some cases, 18 or 20 shelves to you know, North American comics having three or four. Um, yeah, I think there is a, a trend that's happening. I do think people are definitely more interested in manga. But another factor, an undeniable factor, is Viz and some of these manga companies that are importing this stuff in are right now doing a better job with business. Forget about the content, just the business. They are they're providing more attractive deals. They're they're providing easier ways to order. I mean, if you look at how to order manga versus uh, what comes out sometimes from Marvel and DC, um, it's much easier, smarter, better, better incentive packages, better. Uh, it, it's just they're doing a better job on the business side. I think that gets overlooked a lot. Um, here's what I take from all these numbers. Uh, this is a good thing. I think it's a very good thing that uh, we're getting this kind of uh, growth for comics in general. I think that stabilizes the industry. I think it's good, but I think if you are working in this industry, you need to take a hard look and say, am I on a winning team right now or am I on a team that's getting beat right now? Because I think a lot of people, um, I, I think a lot of, I, I think if, you, if you're looking at this and you look at your company and you are not part of the surge or the growth, then you should be very closely looking at what is working other places and trying to adapt it to yourself. Um, the way this picture looks, if you're Marvel or DC, it's it's not great. It's not a it's not a disaster. Again, the people who are saying that you know the whole thing is burning down. It, that's not true, but you are getting absolutely lapped by Scholastic, by Viz, by different manga companies, by other YA companies, and you're seeing you're seeing some real <laughs> so you're seeing somebody really beat you up bad. And I think rather than look at this and saying, hooray, you know, the business is growing. That's what I think the fans and the readers get to do to just say, great, this stuff is doing well. I think the uh, comic producers have to figure out, are they part of the growth or part of the stagnation and, and adjust accordingly? By the way, one last piece here, uh, digital comics. I'm seeing people say, you know, that's showing some growth. It, it absolutely is. Would you like to guess where all the growth is coming from? It's, it's all coming from manga. If you get into the details, it is not coming from uh, from North America, the in, in more than anything else. And by the way, is that a surprise? Manga has uh, done a really terrific job in getting digital content and people accepting of it over in Japan. Shocking! Um, it, they're able to translate that success over to the U.S. I mean, that's like the least surprising thing about this entire picture. But uh, anyway, some interesting numbers. Read the details, and I say this because you know, again, John Jackson Miller at Comic Con. He does show his math. He does go into the details. And I think he likes the details. If you look at his posts, he enjoys getting kind of into the weeds with some of this numbers. 
And uh, I know from talking with him in the past, uh, I know it annoys him a little bit when people just take the first sentence and a picture and make a news article out of it and, and pay no attention to how he arrived at that that work. I mean, he's putting in a lot of work. But anyway, um, lots lots of stuff to think about. Comic numbers, always fun. Thanks for listening.